today we will be discussing about CVS treatment plant and this entire discussion is a sole presentation of ASS Science Foundation Delhi so in case of CVS treatment plants we will study the treatment plant like we have a wastewater we treat that water in different stages like primary treatment secondary treatment followed by tertiary treatment so we will be studying this thing in stages so first talking about primary treatment so primary treatment this involves physical removal of particles larger and small through filtration and sedimentation or coagulation so physically we will be removing the particles okay both small as well as large in size via filtration sedimentation coagulation it removes nearly 35 percent of the bod and 60 percent of the suspended solid from the wastewater this point is very important about the primary treatment that it removes 35 percent of the bod and 60 percent of the suspended solids that settle in primary treatment from primary sludge and the supernatant forms effluent this effluent further will be put into the secondary treatment so this was the process that how primary treatment goes on then you can see the picture shown in first step there will be a screening a screening which removes bottles plastic from sewage and also removes cloth solid objects then there will be a grid chamber here the velocity of the flow is reduced and this allows the settlement of gravels pebbles and grit then we have a next stage which is called third stage where velocity is further reduced to allow the sedimentation and here we have a conveyor belt and the coagulants which are used are very important so the sorry the coagulant used here are very important and the coagulant used are calcium hydroxide aluminium sulfate and iron sulfate these are the coagulants which can be used it is question have been asked then if you can see that the velocity is further reduced to allow the sedimentation in step 3 and the raw sewage which is there you can see in the picture can be used as manure or biosolid so this raw sewage can be utilized as a organic manure and biosolid but only after composting because after composting it will not be having any harmful microbes or any harmful substance so to increase the sedimentation coagulants are added and we have already mentioned as mentioned in the literature that coagulants added are calcium hydroxide aluminium sulfate iron sulfate so these are the coagulants which are added and here we can see the coagulation of flocculation which we mentioned is a surface phenomena right so flocculation is a surface phenomena which we wrote in our literature also then now we will be talking about secondary treatment we are done with the primary treatment now the effluent from the primary treatment goes to secondary treatment so now we will be talking in detail about the secondary treatment secondary treatment involves oxidation of organic matter with the help of microorganisms so secondary treatment involves oxidation of organic matter with the help of microorganism thus it is designed to reduce POD with the help of aerobic microorganisms point to be noted this is aerobic in nature means microorganisms which are used are here are aerobic microorganisms and air this treatment removes 90% of the BOD and 90% of the suspended solid so this point is very important with respect to secondary treatment that the treatment secondary treatment removes around 90% of the BOD and 90% of the suspended solid from the wastewater now if you will study this in detail you can see in our literature as mentioned in the figure that we have an aeration tank where the effluent from the primary treatment was put up 
here we have air simultaneously here we also have flocks or bacterial masses these are nothing these are the colonies of bacteria or sometimes the biofilm associate bacteria associate with fungus hyphae formed here and cause oxidation of nutrients so basically aerobic process will take place here in this case then some of the sludge from this tank is taken as inoculum for the aeration tank so the sludge which is there in the secondary treatment is taken as an inoculation so that we can utilize it later on for inoculating the useful microbes so what is very important with respect to the secondary treatment is that here whatever organic nitrogen we have that is get converted into ammonium or nitrate whatever organic sulfur we have that is converted into sulfate whatever organic phosphorus we have that is converted into h2po4 which is dihydrogen phosphate and hpo42 minus which is monohydrogen phosphate then we have a settling tank where we have secondary sludge or activated sludge or the remaining sludge we will call as after the second settling tank and then we have this uh, sludge is put up into an underground anaerobic digester where we get both the products biogas as well as the manure organic manure we can manufacture from here and this sludge is basically called as activated sludge or asp because it has beneficial microorganisms which aerobically can oxidize the substances present there so what happens in secondary treatment the effluent is mechanically agitated means we are shaking it by pumping of air into aeration tank this allows vigorous growth of useful microorganism into flocks so there will be lots of aerobic microorganism growing here flocks consume maximum organic matter and reduce the pod significantly during their growth so these flocks which are formed there are consume maximum organic matter and reduce the pod significantly during their growth effluent is passed into the settling tank the next step is the effluent is passed into the settling tank where mostly bacterial masses is allowed to form sediments and these sediment is called activated sludge so whatever sludge we mentioned because it is having useful microorganisms beneficial microorganism that is it is called as activated sludge major part of the sludge is pumped into underground anaerobic digester so the major part of the sludge is pumped into underground anaerobic digester where methanogen act on sludge while some part is transferred into aeration tank which can act as inoculum so these bacterial inoculum is taken which can be further transferred to the aeration tank so that the growth of the useful microorganism should not get inhibited this type of secondary treatment is called as activated sludge process or asp it is called so why we call this activated sludge i have already mentioned it has useful my microorganisms beneficial microorganisms there are other type of secondary treatment also so other secondary treatment could be trickling filter these are also the type of secondary treatment trickling filter and uh, rotating biological methods or contractor which employs fixed film biological process I mean the fil film is fixed right so here what happen is like uh, in the case of secondary treatment as you mentioned the sulfur getting converted into sulfate phosphorus into hpo42 minus and h2po4 minus nitrogen to nitrate or ammonium and you can see in the figure also that whatever is left after the manure and biographs that can be drying put up on the drying bed so here we have shown a picture of trickling filter so you can see it has a rock particles covered with microorganisms which are there to just enhance the surface area and from above we are spreading or putting up the effluent on it so that that effluent wherever it gets deposited on these rocks get oxidized with the help of microorganisms so in the case of trickling filter waste water is sprayed over rock which which is visible in the diagram or other solid matter covered with microorganisms thus contact of waste water with air is allowed and the degradation of organic matter occurs with the help of microorganisms so this was all about secondary treatment now we will be moving from secondary to tertiary treatment so there is one very important information about tertiary treatment 
that why tertiary treatment is so important. So in case of tertiary treatment, removal of nitrogen and phosphorus and further it improves the quality of effluent by reducing BOD and suspended solids. So as you can see in the figure that, sorry, the effluent from secondary treatment is put up into the tertiary treatment. And first stage we have a chemical clarifier which we generally use as calcium oxides which removes phosphorus as calcium phosphate. Then in the further steps we add calcium hydroxide to this passing effluent which convert ammonium into ammonia and we have a ammonia stripping tower from where the ammonia is released into air. Moving ahead in the same process, tertiary process, we have a circular body where we have coal, sand of medium size and gravel. So the function of this circular body is removal of turbidity, phosphorus and calcium carbonate. So this remove phosphate and calcium carbonate along with also it removes the turbidity. Then we have a separator belt and furthermore a step ahead we have activated carbon column where the color and the order of the water is removed. So whatever color or order was remaining in that water during the tertiary process that is removed with the help of activated carbon column and tertiary treatment and now this water is somewhat thick for drinking purposes. So this was all about sewage treatment plant. If one want to study more details of the sewage treatment plant, the references are Gilbert M. Master and Manhattan. Environmental Chemistry by Stanley E. Manhattan. So someone can look these books for detail. This was all about sewage treatment plants from ASS Science Foundation Delhi. Hope you enjoy the lecture. Thank you.